Walter Russell believed that everything is light. This can be linked directly with the equation energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. Light will radiate out in all directions, forming a sphere and the three dimensions of our everyday life. All we have to do is place the Lorentz contraction of space and time between the energy and mass. The greater the energy, the greater the contraction of space and the slower time will run. Mass will increase relative to this and each reference frame can be seen as a vortex in space and time. The brackets represent the boundary condition of the reference frame formed by the energy and the infinity symbol represents an infinite number of reference frames that make up our universe. Walter Russell's theories on the universe are very beautiful. His ideas and diagrams represent an alternative to mainstream physics. His idea that we should think of matter as motion with what he calls retarded time which lengthens its periods in a ratio in which matter appears is very profound and similar to the time dilation in Einstein's relativity. Could both men be trying to explain the same dynamic process but using different words explaining it in different ways? Walter Russell's vision of a cosmos based upon twin opposing electromagnetic vortexes is a very elegant theory. But could Walter Russell's electromagnetic vortexes be the same space-time vortex that NASA Gravity Probe B found around the Earth? Mainstream physics has used NASA's Gravity Probe B to confirm the correctness of relativity, but they have no understanding of how this space-time vortex is formed. Relativity is very elegant, but it only explains the geometry or curvature of space-time but it does not explain how the gravity is formed. Only a deeper understanding of time and how it is formed could answer this question. The rest of this video explains a theory on how objects slow the rate that time flows relative to their own energy or momentum, forming their own time or space-time, therefore creating their own future uncertainty within their own reference frame. Walter Russell's vision of a twin opposing electromagnetic vortex could be here seen as a vortex between the future and the past within a process of continuous creation. This theory is based on Einstein's theories of relativity and a deeper understanding of quantum physics, but I believe anyone who has studied Walter Russell's work will find a deep similarity, for it explains a creative process on a level with the destructive process of atomic physics. We are the creators within an emergent process unfolding photon by photon relative to the energy and momentum of our actions. If we think of the universe as a continuum based on one universal process of energy exchange, such a process would form what we see and feel as a passage or continuum of time with an uncertain future continuously unfolding relative to the atoms of the periodic table. This can be explained using this diagram with an arrow of scientific explanation pointing down towards the atoms of the periodic table and an arrow of increasing complexity pointing up towards the great complexity and diversity of life. If we start at the bottom of the diagram, we see that there is no flow or concept of time in the subatomic world within the atoms. All we have is the distribution of positive and negative charge within the atoms. This is what we would expect if what we experience as a period of time is formed by a process of energy exchange relative to the electron probability cloud that surrounds each atom. At the most fundamental level, this is a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. This is represented by spherical harmonics on the diagram. Only a process of symmetry forming and breaking would form entropy 
or disorganization with a built-in potential for ever greater symmetry formation as we see in the great diversity and complexity of life. As we move up the diagram we have an image of a photon-electron coupling and a dipole moment. These are two different ways of explaining the same process with the future unfolding at the smallest unit of energy, the light quanta. Each photon-electron coupling or dipole moment only occurs once, but the process of energy exchange is continuously forming the continuum of time. This process forms a movement of positive and negative charge with the continuous flow of electromagnetic fields in three-dimensional space. This process also forms 100% antimatter annihilation, with the future being based 100% on the past. In the lower right of the diagram, we see this as symmetry forming and breaking, in the form of antimatter annihilation, representing the past, with a mirror image between the future and the past, at the moment of creation, or at each dipole moment. This forms wave-particle duality, and we have to move up to the next part of the diagram. In this theory, the wave-particle duality of light and matter in the form of electrons is forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, forming the possible into the actual. This can be seen mathematically with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle of quantum mechanics representing the uncertainty of everyday life at the smallest scale of this process. We are now on the part of the diagram that says one universal process. Everything below this part of the diagram is represented by quantum mechanics with the mathematics of quantum mechanics representing the physics of time as a geometrical process in three-dimensional space. Everything above this part of the diagram can be represented by classical physics as processes over a period of time, as in Newton's differential equations. With the time dilation of Einstein's relativity representing part of a universal process of energy exchange, slowing up the rate that time flows, forming the curvature of space-time. I believe there are two reasons why this theory is difficult to comprehend. The first is represented in the top right-hand corner of the diagram. At high temperatures we have a phase change of matter forming plasma, with the same fundamental process unfolding at a much larger scale in the form of plasma, the movement of charge can cover an entire star or even a large area of interstellar space. The second reason why this theory is difficult to comprehend is represented in the top left-hand corner of the diagram and is because conscious awareness in the form of electrical activity in the brain is an integral part of this process. We are within the process as an interactive part of the process. Each individual is in the center of their own reference frame at the forefront of the creative process with their own timeline from the past into the future. It is this personalization of the brain being in the moment of now in the center of its own frame of reference that gives us the concept of mind with each one of us having our own unique personal view of the universe. Conscious awareness is the most advanced part of a universal process with a continuous stream of unbroken, ever-changing flow of ideas, feelings, dreams and emotions being part of the same universal process of continuous energy exchange that forms a continuum of time. This process is based totally on cause and effect. We have an infinite number of dynamic 
interactive reference frames that make up our universe, that are continuously coming in and out of existence, with each reference frame having a timeline from the past into the future. In such a theory, the future would indeed come out of the present moment for each individual, with the future unfolding relative to the energy and momentum of their actions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. It will help the promotion of this theory.